Tadpoles have been settling in for a couple of weeks and they're doing really well, so I think now it's probably time to give them some new friends. But first, let's check in with the tadpoles and see how they're doing. As you can see, they are loving the spinach and they will crowd around a leaf and nibble at the edge. If it's quiet, you can actually hear them chewing on the leaf. But it's not just spinach they're eating. In fact, they've completely destroyed one of the plants I put in there. You can see a couple of tadpoles chewing on the stem of this plant. This is one I actually bought from a pet shop. You can see the white weighted base that holds the plant down. There were three stems fixed in there when I put it in, and now there's only one, and I don't expect this one to last much longer. Sure enough, the tadpoles have now chewed through the entire thing. I've had to remove all of this plant now, as it was breaking apart into lots of little bits and making the tank look messy. So I said at the beginning that I wanted to add some friends into the tank, so what am I going to add? There is a lot of different creatures that make the pond their home. Not all of them are suitable for the tank, but the creatures I do plan on adding are some snails. You can see here there are several dark brown snails on the side of the pond. These are ram's horn snails. They are air breathing freshwater snails. At the moment they're not doing much, but hopefully I'll get better footage of them in the future episodes. Now there was a concern that the snails can overrun an aquarium as they breed very easily. This is true, but remember everything in my tank will be returned to the pond towards the end of July. There isn't really enough time for them to overrun the tank. But snails can become a problem in permanent aquariums. Now one creature I won't be adding to the tank is this little guy. The focusing on the camera is failing me right now, but this is a damselfly nymph. They are carnivorous, and while the tadpoles are probably too big to be food, it's just not really suitable for the tank. But we'll keep an eye out for these guys when they emerge from the pond in a few weeks time. So anyway, I'm going to collect a few of the snails and something else. Let me show you. Now pond water can be full of microbes, that's why I'm wearing gloves. It's probably an over precaution, but it's better safe than sorry. There are a couple of creatures I found in this piece of pond weed I pulled out. One is a water louse, which is what I want to get, and the other is a leech. Now this leech is proving very difficult to pick up. It can flatten its body to the ground, and I really can't get a good grip on it. The water louse here is a little bit easier to pick up, but, uh, but not much. Anyway, this is what I really want to put in the tank. Uh, this is a water louse, it's a little beetle, it will feed on the detritus in the tank and there will be plenty of food for it in there. There's another one we can just grab here, this one's quite tricky to pick up, but we got it. That one's an interesting one actually, we get a better look at that one later, but that is a pregnant female. I'll go into more detail about that in a moment. But this leech, I need to return this to the pond, I'm not going to put this in the tank, uh, because it is, again, it's carnivorous. It will eat uh, small invertebrates, little tiny water bugs. I don't think they're bloodsuckers. Um, there are so many different species, it's very difficult. It's going to be impossible to tell exactly what this is. Now, they move in kind of a push-pull uh, method. They kind of grip. They've got the sucker at each end, and they will pick up and uh, move themselves along in, in this method. Now, I just, I cannot pick this up. Even using a net, I still can't uh, get underneath the creature. Uh, it's getting a little bit frustrating, so I want to put this back in the pond where it belongs and I'm um, really having a tough time doing it. So I can't see anything else that I particularly want in the uh, pond weed, so I'm going to put that back in the pond. Now I think that there is another water beetle, or another water louse there, which I'm going to try and get hold of. This one's quite a small one, it's very tricky to pick up. But it does eventually get stuck to the tip of my finger and I'm able to put it into the uh, into the jar. So back to the leech, I really want to get this into the pond. Trying to pick it up with a bit of a stick, a bit of a branch, um, it's still <laughs> almost impossible to get. It just flops around. It does not want to be picked up at all. I'm able to finally get it and then we go back into the pond. But just before we do, let's have a quick look at it and see how long it, it stretches out. But there it goes, drops into the pond. Now we can actually, if I quickly get my camera under the water, we can actually get a really good look at it swimming around using this sort of undulating motion. It swims around and it will attach itself to a plant as it tries to recover from its ordeal of being poked and prodded by some uh, huge giant creature. Um, it's really, really good. Um, it, I, I was thinking, is this a flatworm? Is it a leech? It's definitely a leech. The way it moves is very leech-like. 
um, flatworms uh, move completely differently and have kind of different shaped heads. So this is definitely a, a leech. There are a lot of them uh, in the pond. As I say, I'm not sure whether they are bloodsuckers, whether they'll attach themselves to the large creatures, maybe the snails, or whether they'll just... Um, uh, some some of them will actually just swallow uh, little creatures whole, like little Daphnia and other little tiny uh, water beetles and, and water invertebrates we have. There we go. Okay, so back to the tank, and some of these creatures are just as difficult to get out of the jar as they were to put in it. But let's put in the snails and the water louse. Now the water louse is actually really interesting. Now as I said before, they will eat the detritus of the tank, any leftover bits of food, the um, the excrement of the tadpoles, they'll eat all that kind of stuff, algae, that's what the herbivores, they'll eat dead and decaying plant matter. So there'll, there'll be definitely uh, plenty of food for them to eat in there. But the interesting thing that I've put in here, now I picked up what I thought was three, but as I get one out of the jar, I actually notice that it's actually two together. Uh, now what you can see here, unfortunately the camera here is not suited for close-up work, so it's not really in focus, and it's probably really difficult to tell. But here we have um, a mating pair. We have a larger male riding the back of the smaller female. What he's actually doing, he's attached himself to the female and he's protecting her to stop any other males from attempting to mate with her. And what he's doing, he's waiting for her to molt her shell as she grows. And when she does that, she becomes soft enough and he's actually then able to mate with her at that point. So he's just protecting her until she molts. And that's what he's waiting for. Now the other one uh, we put in, and now again, you can't really see this on camera because uh, it just doesn't focus. This one here is a pregnant female. Uh, well, I can see here, you may be able to see it, it's a little bit out of focus, but there is a pale yellow blob on her underside. Uh, now, water louses are crustaceans and they have what's called a brood pouch. So the female will lay her eggs into this brood pouch and uh, they will actually mature and molt several times uh, before uh, being given birth to as miniature versions of the adults. They'll be very, very small and they will then grow into it. So it'll be kind of a live birth. Uh, but that's what we can see here. It's very difficult to see. So unfortunately, this camera, it isn't suited to close-up work, so it is tricky to see. But uh, that pale yellow thing in the centre there, that's the brood pouch. And there we go. All right, well, I think that is going to be all for today. Thank you so much for watching. We've added some new friends for our tadpoles. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much because the support on this series has been absolutely crazy. The number of views and things that I'm getting is really, really good. And I really, really do appreciate it, everything. Please leave me a like, leave me comments down in the section. If you have any questions about anything that I've done in this video, uh, please do ask them in the comment section. And uh, I will hopefully cover anything you want to know uh, in future episodes. Uh, hopefully in, in in the coming up episodes we'll be able to have a better and closer looks at some of these creatures that I've put in and lots of other things around. I always like to focus on one or two species of animals that we find either in or around the pond and, uh, and as well as the usual update on the tadpoles. So join me again next Sunday for some more Frogwatch. I'll see you then. Goodbye.